Uh, so four, when he was four, this is when he was four. So he goes back to Mecca, spends more time, a short time with his mother, and she, she decides to visit Medina, which is called Yathrib. Okay, that time. And, and the reason for the visit is, is, is twofold. One is that his father's buried there. His father Abdullah is buried there. And the other is that he has relatives there um, from his, from his great-grandmother his great uh, is from the, one of the clans of, of, of Medina. So he has relatives there distant relatives that he goes to visit and uh, and this is very important you know Arab, they're always conscious of who their relatives are and what tribes they're allied to and so on so they would honor those ties and so she goes to visit medina with the prophet sallam, and he spends some time there he learns to swim in some of the pools in, in medina and then on their way back from mecca they leave uh, they go back uh, to medina uh, to mecca sorry uh say the amina his mother falls ill and dies at a place called Abwa, Abwa, which is which is between Mecca and Medina, closer to Mecca. She dies there, and um, it's left to Um Ayman. Um Ayman is um, a very blessed woman, and almost like really like a mother to the no, one of the prophets, other mothers, you could say. She's a, she's like a um, serves him. She's um, she she's the only one who is really with him from from his from from birth to death. She outlives, she outlives him. She's a blessed woman from uh, from Abyssinia, from an African woman. She spends, she serves him, uh, and she is the one who takes him back as an orphan, having lost his father and lost now lost his mother. At the age of six, she takes him back to Mecca. Okay, his Amman is buried there in Abwa, and she comes back to. So the prophet now is, is left with no no mother. Uh, he never knew his father. He now has no no mother. So he comes into the care of his grandfather Abdul Muttalib, who we talked about before. This this now very old, distinguished elder of Quraysh, um, who, who's who's held in great respect. He becomes like the carer, the guardian of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but but not for long, only a couple of years. And and this is Abdul Muttalib would sit. Since it's noted that Abdul Muttalib would sit in the shade of the Kaaba. He would put down a mat and take, put down a a thing and sit and. And uh, you know this is this is a you know prime place you could say not 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 just anyone can do that, but he would sit there. And Muhammad would come and, and play and they, and and uh, and sit on his on his on his father's lap and he'd tell him stories and and that but that's that time it only lasted a couple of years. Uh, so at the age of eight, Abdul Muttalib passes away, and then he comes under the care of his uncle Abu Talib. Okay, he comes under the care of his uncle Abu Talib. Probably has ten uncles. Oh, there was ten sons. Um, who were his? Uh, you know, his father was the youngest, and there's um, there's three or well, there's four that we really need to know whose names we really need to know that, that we'll come to one by one. Abu Talib is the first we're going to mention. Abu, Abu Talib is the Prophet's uncle, and he becomes the carer and the guardian of the Prophet. Abu Talib has a lot of, has is 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 you know, struggling financially, and and the Prophet doesn't want to be a burden upon him, so he works as a shepherd. He, he tends people's flocks. In order to earn a living, to be more financially independent, because he doesn't have any uh, very, of his own income, he doesn't have like inherited, you know, he hasn't inherited much. He's, he's, um, and he's, you know, he's, he's, um, but he learns, uh, and, there's, and he said, so, so every prophet that Allah has sent has spent time as a prophet. Okay. And this is um, the idea that as, as every prophet that Allah has sent has spent time as a shepherd, so a rai. A rai, a carer, you know, someone who cares for the shepherds, cares for the sheep. He learns this, this, this skill or this um, art, if you like, well, uh, in in the mountains around Mecca, taking care, of, taking care of people's flocks. Yeah. And even Musa, Musa is Musa has that experience in the Quran. He's a, he's a shepherd, and other and the other prophets as well. And part of that is learning this. The caring, being, being a care, becoming a, if you can care for these animals and take care of their welfare and start and prevent them from from wolves getting them or other, or other wild animals, and you can then be ready to you're preparing yourself to care for for people as well for a whole nation. Um, and it's you know the other things in there. It's, like, it's humility, um, patience, leadership. You have to be very patient, you have to be very hard, you have to be, it's not easy to do this. Um, integrity. Yeah. 
and um, that's where that's how the Prophet is spending his his um, teenage years, basically his, his early youth as as a shepherd, helping where he can. Um, again, he brings actually he brings blessings to the house of Abu Talib. There's, although Abu Talib is struggling, that uh, the Prophet brings with him some blessings, saying that there was there was an, when the, when the when the, whenever the Prophet ate with the, with the rest of the family, there'd be enough food for everyone. But if he was if, he, if they ate if they didn't wait for him, he wasn't present. They would they would, they would go. There'd be food, but it wouldn't be enough for them. They'd be, they'd still be hungry. Um, so he had that. He brought those blessings to the house of Abu Talib. And um, he is also um, one of the things about his his youth is he's and uh, as a prophet he he is um, he is um, protected he's infallible he's he doesn't he's, he doesn't commit a prophet does not commit sins and doesn't commit they're not they're not um, they don't fall into dis disobedience to, to God and that's in it, that's why their prophets are also before even before that. So that any of the um, prophets never engaged in any of the things of, of jahiliyyah. He never engaged in any idol worship. He never engaged in any of the, the, the false custom, all the false beliefs or false customs of his time. Although that was there was a pressure to do that, and and people were doing that, but he always avoided it. So I said, and he always had this purity about him. Uh, and even he want he he had the he was once um, uh, he was once with his with his. Um, up in the hills with his flock and he, he heard there was a wedding taking place in Mecca happened more than once and he wanted just to go and just experience what's happening and there's, 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 there's wine and there's song and there's other things taking place he wanted just to check it out you know he's just a young man he wanted to check it out and so he asked his friend to take care of the sheep and he went to take part in this but even in that Allah protected him from from being you know being affected by what's going on he, so he just actually fell asleep and didn't didn't take part in any of the what was taking place in the wedding. He woke up the next, he woke up with the sun on his on his face. So there's a divine care and protection taking taking place in his youth, protecting him from from engaging things, um, speaking to Allah subhanahu wa taala.